time, strippers appeared on divorce court. She was she wanted to be a stripper. Can you understand that a man would, a husband would be concerned about that? Which I didn't have trouble with her working in the strip club. That doesn't make sense because you're stripping so you can make money to pay for the bills. Right before we split up. You're not even, now you're gonna try to sell me that you're into grief counseling or no, something. No, <laughs> I mean, you're getting together, you're having a good time, you got women dancing on the table, you're drinking and, you, and your pants are hung low. Oh boy! Things take a pretty wild turn between Kim Woody and Michael Woody, and it wouldn't have happened if Michael had just listened to Kim. But no, it all had to get worse. And guess where that took them? Yep, right into divorce court. All Michael really had to do was get a job and keep the money coming from his family. This is a matter of Kim Woody versus Michael Woody, and I'm advised, Mrs. Woody, that you had to take a job doing what you really didn't want to do to support your family. What's going on? Yes, ma'am. Michael had a problem with supporting his family. He couldn't keep a job for longer than three months. As kind what of was a, his problem? I don't really know. Not um, just lazy? I couldn't Your Honor, that's a lie. But wait, while Kim stands there all confident and whatnot, calling her husband a lazy piece of work, those are some really strong words. Wonder how that's making Michael feel. Not very great, because isn't it tragic that he can't earn for his family, and now his wife's dragging his ego to the very ground in court? So of course, he decides to point fingers too. He calls Kim a liar. Why is it a lie? Your Honor, she was working, doing what she was doing before we ever got married. Okay, what is doing what she was doing? What are you talking about? Dancing in a, an exotic club. Dancing at an exotic club? Yes. She was a stripper. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and I was working as a stripper before we got married. However, I quit because that's not what I wanted to do. Hold up, what? Lying isn't the only thing Michael's accusing his wife of. Turns out she's been busy doing other things. And boy, that sure doesn't make Michael all that happy, huh? He's accusing her of working as a stripper. Poor Michael had to sit at home and embrace the role of a house husband while his wife went out on midnight shifts, using her body to earn some bread. But that's not what's got Michael all worked up, though. She was very promiscuous, and she was with a lot of people. So that's your excuse for not working is because she was out with your, your best friend? No, Your Honor, I was working. It got so bad that, to the point that where I was so insecure about my marriage that I quit my job so I could be there to make sure that nothing was going on in front of my children. She was with so many people while we were together. It's how Kim told Michael that she's been with a whole lot of men. Now, that's sure enough to make him feel bad about himself. Yeah, sure, Kim was a stripper before they got married, but she wanted to stop once she married the man she loved, aka Michael. But with Michael's persistent joblessness, Kim had to take measures into her own hands, even if it meant sleeping around. I need to be very insecure because we have four children, and I found out recently that there's the only possibility is one of them is mine. How'd you find that out? She told me, Your Honor. Well, I was working as a stripper. I called home one night. I was having a very bad night. I had a headache. I told him, I'm going to be home early. I will be home at 2 o'clock. I heard voices in the background when I called him. I said, please. And it just keeps getting worse. With her stripping job taking a toll on her, Kim returns home to find out that Michael's having a party with underage girls drinking. That's more than enough to piss her off. And guess what she does? She kicks Michael and the people out of the house. But then the next morning, something very unexpected happens. Michael's best friend comes over, and Kim does the one thing that drives Michael over the edge. When I found out that all of this had happened, when I kicked the other people that were there out of my house, I kicked him out as well. I just said, everybody get out of my house, Mike, that includes you. His best friend, who had been coming over to check up on me for Mike, he had come over as a friend to console me. At this point, Michael's one big ball of insecurities. He has absolutely no problem with his wife selling her body to earn money. But damn, Michael just cannot keep the jealousy inside his pants. While Kim works at the club trying to make money, her husband just comes by and sits there for hours on end, doing absolutely nothing. He sits there and keeps a check on Kim and drinks beer, all from the money Kim's earned. Your Honor, what I found out was while she was working in the strip club, which I didn't have trouble with her working in the strip club. That doesn't make sense because you're stripping so you can make money to pay for the bills. Right before we split up, he had started coming into the club where I was working and sitting there for two, three, four hours. So it cut uh, your business Sitting out. there drinking beer from my money that I was bringing home for the family. And that's pretty much it. A story for the ages. The one where the stripper turns out to be the wife. And Michael, seemingly supportive on the surface, just cannot take it anymore. Yet at the same time, he shamelessly spends his wife's money. And now, the court decides what's going to happen about that. 
Will Michael have to pay all the debts that have piled up? Both of you are responsible for them. So the court's order is that each of you is responsible for one half of the outstanding debts. I'm ordering that each of you pay $482.46 on the outstanding credit card debts. That's the order. The court's adjourned. Now, next up is the not-so-wonderful story of Rachel and Tiffany. These two lovebirds stumbled upon each other in a church of all places. And soon enough, romance between them overflowed. Everything was sunshine and rainbows, but when they moved in together, it seems trouble moved in too. And when I say trouble, I'm talking about strippers, which according to Tiffany here, were just some get-togethers. Were you partying at the house while she was at work? No, I wasn't partying, it was a get-together. What's the difference between a party and a get-together? Get-together like friends, you know, we have like, we go to different people's houses, each other's houses. Uh-huh. It'd be my house sometimes. Some like, some people have issues, so we talk about the issues they be having. So it's like a get-together, ain't no party. Yeah, we do play music and stuff. While Rachel had been busting her ass at work, carving all those sophisticated fruit displays, Tiffany seemed to be having a different kind of fun at home. Lord knows how long Tiffany had been having these innocent get-togethers. And when one day Tiffany's luck ran out, Rachel caught him red-handed. Imagine poor Rachel's surprise when she found out exactly who had been dancing on her precious table. One of my friends walked in, so when I opened the door, Mr. Tiffany over here with his wife beater shirt on and his pants sagging, had his beer can in the air and was just, and then everybody else was just rapping to the music and doing all kind of stuff. And so then I turned around and there was a lady on my table dancing. I wanted to knock the top of his head off. As if having a strange woman dancing in Rachel's home wasn't enough, Tiffany had a whole elaborate excuse plant. All the daytime drinking and partying and dancing, it was all to cheer up his sad friends. Can you believe the audacity of this man? Even Judge Toller wasn't buying Tiffany's whole grief counseling thing. Come on, man, be a little serious here. Homeowner like. Well, it's not drinking all the time. Sometimes, like some people uh, lose family members. They need somebody to talk to sometimes. It's really serious. So we just friends get together. Hey, now you're you gonna try to sell me that you're into grief counseling or no, something. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it's getting together, you're having a good time, you got women dancing on the table, you're drinking, and, you, and your pants are hung low. So Rachel did what any other woman in the world would have done if they found out how their fiance had brought a stripper into the house she kicked Tiffany to the curb. But damn, this woman really can't make up her mind. After kicking Tiffany out, she ended up letting him back in. Only this time, she didn't let him sleep in her bed. Makes you wonder though, if she hated him so much, why let him back in? Did it get better? You put him on the couch. You didn't let him back in the bed. No, nah, I ain't coming back in the bed. Wasn't nothing cracking with that. Nothing. Do you know why she was angry? Because that lady was on the table and broke her <laughs> dish. And don't you think that's something you could apologize for? I told her I was sorry. She just didn't want to listen to me. She didn't want to hear it? No. You know, she... But you still think you should have the right to have the party then? Yes, it's my house too. <laughs> but there's a big twist to this tale. Tiffany's not done with all the accusations Rachel's throwing at him, so he decides to make the big revelation. He feels like Rachel has no right to point fingers at him when she herself comes back home in very little clothing. What on earth is Tiffany talking about? It seems like when Rachel's not around Tiffany, she gets rid of her grandma clothes and shows off all her assets. Tight pants, uh, no sleeves on her arms, just chest out, you know, really She doesn't leave the house like that? She changes she, after she leaves? She changed. Like one time I was in the mall with my friend, ran across Rachel and her friend, she looking different. I'm, you know, I'm checking her out, you know, because they're like ladies. You know, it was Rachel though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, who is this chick? <laughs> yeah. Turn around, it was your woman. It was my lady. All of this mess has made Rachel feel like it's not even worth marrying Tiffany. Before they moved in, he was a sweet and responsible young man. But now, oh boy, it's like all hell is broke loose. And it's not just that, Rachel wants money for the precious heirloom that Tiffany's stripper broke. But on top of that, Rachel's called off the wedding. She wants you out of the house, she wants you to pay back her deposit, and she also wants you to pay for the platter that the stripper broke. You say, however, you just want her. Yeah, she want me too. She just upset right now. Plus, I didn't call off the wedding, so I don't owe her no deposit for nothing. And uh, she just need time to cool off before we can stay together. Rachel still loves Tiffany, and it looks like Tiffany wants her too. But they're both in their 40s now, and all Rachel wants is someone who's mature and serious. Not someone who spends his day drinking bottles of beer like it's water or something. But here's the confusing thing. She still loves this man, and all she wants is a little more romance and a little less strippers. 
And this is where Tiffany makes his grand declaration. I hope your word means something, because I like you people, and I want you to be together and be married. I want you to keep the hookers off the table. Okay. I'm not going to give money for the planet, because I think you're going to I think you're gonna stay together and work it out. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. And here's another one with Judge Lynn Tolder. This time, it's about a woman whose dream is to make it big. And when I say big, I mean she wants to be a famous stripper in the industry one day. The woman's name is Amber, but it looks like there's a big obstacle in the way of Amber's dreams, and it's none other than her husband, Taiwan. What dreams do you have that he doesn't support? I want to be a dancer. I've actually been dancing since we've been separated, but he didn't want me to dance. She, she wanted to be a stripper. Can you understand that a man would, a husband would be concerned about that? It's a lifestyle that brings you, oh, well, there's, there you go. <laughs> Come on now, what guy would want his wife to work at a strip club? But Amber keeps saying it's something that's in her heart, and she's just got to follow her dreams. Taiwan's not all innocent either, though, because Amber's seen him flirt right and left when he used to work as a music promoter. Talk about hypocrisy. He flirts so much, he's like a big flirt. He will flirt with anybody. I'm not going around sleeping with nobody or trying to do anything besides that, but when you're in somebody's face and you're like, oh yeah, you're so cute, or how you doing, or oh, girls giving him kisses on the cheek while he's at work, it's too much. Taiwan had a lot of big dreams, too. He wanted to be a hotshot in the music business, but Amber kept pushing him to quit. And ever since then, the poor man hasn't been able to make them big bucks. It's confusing what Amber wants. She made Taiwan quit his job, but keeps saying he doesn't bring in enough money. Girl, pick a side. At least doing something that's gonna get me to that, that, that dream, but right. it's like, yeah, sometimes you do go down, especially when you work with somebody else. People with an entrepreneurial spirit sometimes don't do well for a while, and then they do well. Right. You know what I mean? Then they do really well. And on top of that, both of them have a kid together. Kwame's an adorable little boy, but it turns out Taiwan's mother didn't think the kid belongs to Taiwan. Uh-oh, it looks like he's too much of a mama's boy, and that doesn't sit right with Amber. She feels like Taiwan's mother is always trying to cause problems for her, and she's the reason why they had to get a DNA test done. Mrs. Collins, do you want this relationship to survive? Not no. if they're not N going Ms. to Smith? be responsible people, no. Because I did my things in the past, but after I got myself together, my kids was my first priority. That's what I do. It's pretty obvious that for Taiwan, watching his wife pole dancing in skimpy clothes, but they've got a kid together, and no matter what, they've got to make sure Kwame keeps smiling. Is there a way for them to put their issues aside? Can they stay together for the sake of Kwame? Or will they decide to go separate ways? Mr. Collins, I think you're a good guy, and I want you to make sure, I don't think you're gonna, but I just want to make sure you don't get distant. Mrs. Collins, you're older than she is. I will ask you to step up first. Apologize for whatever negativity you may have brought to the situation. Watch this 10-year-old marriage go down the drain just because the husband has a hard time keeping it in his pants. Tim's addiction to visiting strip clubs has taken a huge toll on poor Angie. She's absolutely wrecked and just can't take it anymore. It gets worse when she stumbles upon a local stripper talking about how much Tim tips her. One day I was getting my nails done and then my nail tech told me how the stripper had come in and was bragging about how Tim English had given her $80 tip the night before. She 80. knew his name? Yes. I'm the type of person I do not ask how much money you have in your pocket, but when I ask you for $150 to pay the light bill, I expect you to have it. But Tim's got a pretty funny spin on the whole story. This man says he doesn't go to the strip club to watch ladies strip. Nah, uh, he's just there to uh, enjoy some beer. Well, do you believe that? Angie for sure doesn't. On top of that, they don't have the money to pay all the bills, and boy, are they piling up. She leaves for work at six in the morning. Been, yeah, she and comes done home that. at Come six home the next morning. Come all the way around her neck, and you I, think hickeys meaning like love bites? Well, you tell me how it went. Yeah, what's what's it this went. about it? Mr. English's point is, yeah, I go to the strip joints. That's my pastime. Yes, I spend money. That's my pastime. And I look at the menu, but I don't eat. Angie's got some secrets up her sleeve, though. She hasn't been all that straight because Tim's seen her come back home with a bunch of hickeys all over her neck. Damn. Things between the two got so bad, they decided just to stay together for their daughters. But at the same time, they thought it would be okay to sleep with other people. So Angie goes and she finds herself a 24-year-old boy toy. Doing what you wanted to do, what did you do? I started seeing someone. Yeah. You decided that these wonderful children aren't worth me coming home to and being an example for and being there when I get off from work 
What is that? How no, is that no, no. I was home every single day. So hold and on. I would, ba I, would get, I would get home with my kids, fix dinner most of the time. <laughs> the only thing I ask her to do is having the homework done. Angie and Tim don't stop fighting. Even when they've decided to keep their marriage open, Tim's got some beef with Angie's young boyfriend who stays over sometimes. And guess how Tim decides to deal with it? By airing the family's dirty laundry, not just in front of the neighbors, but in front of their daughters as well. What must those poor girls think? I told him. Uh, he's the one that chooses to scream our dirty laundry in front of our children, which I've begged him time and time and again. And that's what always happens when do. people aren't getting alone. So that's why I'm staying together in this kind of sham marriage is not for the benefit of the children. You all just wanted your cake and your ice cream and didn't want to give it up. It looks like these two just can't stay together anymore. Things have gotten pretty bad between them. And all Angie wants right now is for Tim to take responsibility for his children. He straight up refuses to help Angie with the kids and the bills until the judge tries to knock some sense into his head. Will Tim try to be the better person and help out Angie? There's only one way to find out. All I'm saying to you is I understand your pain, your anger, but the point is when you try to make your wife suffer because you're upset over the way she treated you, who really suffers is your children. The order of the court for today is that you will pay half of the total orthodontic bill. Right. The total bill was $34.77. It's time for the hot drama that's been going on between Brandy and Latre. Brandy's found a way to keep that cash coming in, and it's not sitting right with Latre for some reason. Surprisingly, Brandy was a stripper when she first met Latre, but now it turns out the guy's got some serious trust issues with Brandy's job. Is it jealousy? Insecurity? You have different, multiple men right. texting, calling, and instead of her putting a foot down saying, you know what I'm saying, I do have an outside life, it's just like you proving them. Now, are you entertaining calls from dudes off your job? Yeah, on there. When people call my phone, they're calling me for business only. Latre accuses Brandy of not telling her exactly what she's up to. So when she's out and about doing work and doesn't pick up his calls because he's concerned about her safety, it makes him think she's sleeping with other guys. On top of that, some of Brandy's clients keep on calling her even when she's not at work. Why would they do that? Is Brandy hiding something? My husband was an escort, and some woman calls, hey, babe, I'm gonna go over here and make this money with this chick. I think I'd feel some sort of way about that myself. And is it, it and it's just the idea of what she's getting ready to do just gets under your skin. I mean, it plays a part in between, I guess, cause. But Latrice's not the only one who's got issues in this relationship. It looks like Brandy's thrown up plenty of fusses about Latrice's children. In fact, she's even gotten into cat fights with some of the baby mamas. Now hold up, maybe Brandy doesn't like Latre hanging out with the mother of his kids? That doesn't sound right. I'm like, what you talking about? He was like, you ain't been on Facebook. I'm like, I'm at work. He was like, man, your baby mama and your girl going at it. So I go on and I look at it. The whole situation just got blown out of proportion, but I feel like it shouldn't have got that well, way. What were they talking about? My baby mama don't want my kid around her. And His I tell her, don't came, entertain baby. her. I didn't entertain her. I literally spoke to this woman as a woman. There's a bigger issue here. And it's how Brandy acts all sneaky when she's out at work. It makes Latre feel like the woman he loves is going behind his back. And trust me, no man ever wants that. In fact, he's even okay with her stripping as long as she drops him a call between work. Would Brandy be willing to make that compromise? It's the way she handles what she's doing that makes you jealous. I don't believe that. Under what circumstances and what kind of behavior could she display that would allow you to be comfortable with her profession? First, I'm gonna start off by saying, I mean, start out with communication. Brandy's more than okay with proving to Latre that she only goes to the club to work, but that Latre sees things that make him doubt everything. No one's allowed to touch the strippers at the party, but that night, plenty of men smack Brandy's ass, and she does nothing about it. How does Latre react to that? Does he start a fight at the club? I understand in the strip club there's a but, rule you're not supposed to touch the stripper, so maybe the guys weren't obeying the rule. I mean, a couple of them wasn't, but at the same time, she could control that. I was looking dead at her, and my whole thing was I wasn't gonna get mad because I was drinking a little bit. I said, I'm just gonna drink and just, you no, know, say something about it. And I'm like, I thought you said wasn't nobody gonna touch you. Here's the thing, though. Brandy and Latrite clearly love each other. They want to be together, but they don't really listen to what they want. It's like they're both confused. Will they be able to overcome their jealousy issues and stop acting like jerks to each other? 
Or are they going to keep driving each other up a wall? I think you're a good woman. Stop defending your position and figure out how you can give the other person a little bit of what they need. And from there, you might have a shot at a relationship that's something other than an ongoing argument. I wish you both the best of luck. This matter is adjourned.